<laughs> Leave it to a bass fish. You can never stop trying to work. Can't stop. Got to catch one. All right. We're talking about the Lucky Craft LV series. Um, hands down, my favorite lipless crankbaits of all times. And there's two of them here. I got one in my hand here shaking them, but I'm trying to catch one. All right, there's two baits. That's all you need to know. There's the LV500, which is probably the most popular of all. What separates it from the other baits is it's small profile, but it's heavier. Uh, most baits that size weigh about a half ounce. This one's a little over five eighths of an ounce. So when you're trying to fish deep water grass lines, stay down deep, uh, it stays down deep easier. So, or if you're trying to do what we're doing out here, jig it out in 30 foot of water, get your bait down there. But the LV500 has, has a great sound to it, super loud. So if you're trying to trigger fish through rattles or have a small profile, heavy bait to stay down, that's it. And then the next one is the LV100. And this is, this is my shallow water go-to lipless. When those fish are in a foot to five foot of water, this is my go-to bait. It's a quarter ounce profile, but it weighs like three eighths of an ounce. So once again, like the LV500, it's heavier than most baits at size in the profile. It's got a little bit of fin on the back of it, uh, but it's got a great vibration. Great sound, not quite as loud as a 500, but you don't want that kind of noise out of a small profile bait. Wouldn't be natural. So LV100, LV500, those two lipless crankbaits do probably 99% of my lipless crankbait fishing from a foot down to 30 foot. So uh, if you haven't fished them, check them out. Um, they're my go-to, they're my favorite lipless crankbaits. I'm gonna go back trying to catch another one. As far as fishing the LV500 deep, there's, you can fish it a, it's kind of like a jig and spoon slash jig. Um, you know, unless you get in, some stuff gets real snaggy and hard to get it through, but hey, as you can see, I'm just kind of popping it. You can stroke it faster or harder. Uh, you, if you, sometimes it just takes a, a bigger rip to really get the fish triggered. Um, sometimes it's just a little, just little hops. You know, these last couple bites I have, I haven't been really stroking it, ripping it off the bottom like that. But you see, you can rip it harder like so. Now, as far as doing this, I tend to, I use a, I use a seven foot rod most of the time. Um, and you can kind of go between, there's times I love a fiberglass. Oh man, that's totally bite. I use sometimes just a crankbait rod. Um, the only reason is because when these fish do grab it down there, and sometimes you got kind of smaller treble hooks, lighter wire, that if you have too stiff of a rod, you can pull those hooks out of the fish pretty easily. And that's not what we want to do. So, um, like this rod, I'm using my seven foot spinnerbait rod. It's a medium action. Um, so for this, this is the most common rod I use for this situation. So it's got enough power to you know, be able to get a decent hook set on the fish without overpowering the hooks. And sometimes it just, like, like these fish here, they don't, I just kind of lift up, they're heavy. Other times you'll watch them, they'll knock slack in your line, they'll smoke it. So it just kind of, the fish will tell you how they want it. I think it's just such a, it's such a different presentation than, oh, I just, come on. I'm sitting there trying to turn the boat.